Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. It's episode 115. Wow. And we're continuing our playthrough of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. When last we left off, um, <laughs> we were finishing up some business on uh, Dixon and Onderon, and we just saved the Queen, all hail the Queen, and um, we, we had a rather interesting cutscene before our conversation with Jedi Master Kavar. Uh, we do... Before I forget, let me... Uh, no, that's not what I want. There we go. Alright, so once I finish uniting all the Jedi Masters, then I should... Uh, I should be able to, to get the Enclave started and, and get down the final, final storyline trajectory. That all kicks off from that. Fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not sure which. Everything hinges on Dantooine. Uh, one of the one of the guides that I played through that suggested a uh, path through all this really suggested that I do what I'm going to do now before I did the quest line that I already did. So in other words, you get that message to return to Dixon. And you kind of ignore that and go take care of things on Dantooine. And then you come back and do this. And then you'll go back to Dantooine again. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if uh, this means that things aren't going to work the way that I hope they do. But we'll, we'll see. First things first. Board the ship. And I did pick up a couple other things that uh, I, do, I do need to... Uh, do, oh, never mind. We got story time. I would like to speak with you about your assistance. Yeah. My assistant? Oh, right. What is it? I believe he has it in his head that my relative size is comical. Well, I, I mean... find his disparaging beeps and whistles to be quite annoying. So do I. I thought only utility droids had size issues. If I am to continue to operate with him, I would appreciate it if you spoke with him about this. Otherwise, I will be forced to find a more permanent solution. <laughs> okay, so we seem to be having a little, uh some issues on the ship. Alright, I really should do another crew check-in, but it, it's been very recent since I did that, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But what I am going to do is I need to... I, I forgot that I have a feat that allows me to use, add my wisdom bonus to defense, which means that I should have been wearing these robes all along, because I'd be able to get the same defense out of out of uh, a set of robes with a defense bonus of one, as I would with the light armor with a defense bonus of four. Uh, now, that does cut out one of the overlays, which means that I lose some of the damage immunities that I, I was uh, taking some pretty good advantage of. But it does mean that I can get some serious stat boosts to include. If I were to go pull this uh, underlay out of my current gray Jedi robes and let's filter this down to the armor so the gray Jedi robes defense bonus of one and I get a plus two to charisma and regen force points one which is nice uh, or or I could go to these Ossus keeper robes defense bonus one charisma plus two and instead Instead of the regen force points, I get an extra plus four to intelligence and plus four to wisdom. Which means my defense should go up as well. Unless unless the feed only goes with my base wisdom and not my after modifier wisdom. Which it seems to do in some of the weirdest places. But hey, I'll, I'll take the bonus I can take. Yeah, so I can't put... Uh, I don't have any overlays that I can put on robes for some reason. Uh, but I can get that bio-restorative underlay in there and assemble that. And I'll be equipping those Osseous Keeper robes. Which will be nice, because that'll also give me regen 3 and a constitution plus 3 with the uh, robes on. The other thing that I wanted to do is... Uh, is that my lightsaber? That should be my lightsaber. Uh, it's the one with the orange crystal. Okay, good. We picked up a couple of crystals and stuff too, so... Uh, plus... Okay, so... That's what I had in there a minute ago. 
plus one wisdom, plus one charisma. Uh, flat damage of plus two, that's not bad. It, cause it's not a lot, but on the other hand, it is consistent, which is always nice. Uh, that's a little bit better. One to ten cold damage and a plus two charisma. So that I don't get the, the benefit of the plus one wisdom, but... It means my charisma definitely adds one more to all my charisma based stuff, which is uh, that that could be that could be better than having the plus one in wisdom, especially since I'm adding robes that already give me a plus four to wisdom. So taking a one hit to get an extra two charisma, that's that's not bad. Oh, <laughs> that's also nice. Two to sixteen fire damage. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so let's do this first. Let's definitely replace that plus one wisdom, plus one charisma with an extra one to ten cold damage and a plus two charisma. And what did I have in this one? A plus two to attack and a plus three to damage. The only other crystal that I'd really want to put in there would be this guy here for two to sixteen fire damage. On the one hand, it means that the fire damage is going to cut through a lot of the resistances that the enemies have for energy damage, which would be nice. Uh, it's not a consistent three damage, which is not nice. But that plus two to attack is that plus two to attack is really nice. So I think I'm gonna. Sk Skip on that ingot and, and just go with the same plus three damage, plus two to attack. Uh, just because having a flat damage bonus is kind of nice and I really want that plus two to attack. It's not worth it for the fire damage. Although on the other hand, rolling higher than a three is always nice. Hmm. It also means that I'm doing fire and cold damage. They can't be immune to all of them, can they? Okay, maybe they can. Uh, but do I want to hit more reliably or do more damage? That is the question. And I think I'm going to stick with hit more reliably because I would also like to take uh, one of these other lightsabers. Like, I think the... If I remember right, the purple lightsaber is visas. Okay, five to twenty-seven, seven to twenty. Okay, yeah. Well, either way, we'll want to upgrade that one. So let's take this and instead of the one d six physical damage, which is kind of nice, we'll go with a two to sixteen fire. And we'll leave the plus two to charisma and the cold damage and assemble that. And we'll take this other double-bladed saber that's missing a crystal. And we'll give it another plus two damage right there. Alright. And, and then, and knowing that, uh, we're going to go to... Oh, never mind. They've already got, they've already got a couple of bonuses there. So what about... This one? Yeah, I want to go ahead and, like, at this point, any crystal's better than none. There we go. So we got the lightsabers upgraded with everything that we found there. We got my armor upgraded, and now I can go to my equipment, ditch these gray robes for the uh, Asus Keeper robes. Although, here's the question. Alright, so I got the Great Robes. My defense is 34. That's going to add another plus 4 wisdom. 36. Okay, so it is going off of the newly modified wisdom. Which is... That's very nice. I kind of wish I'd remembered that a long time ago. Alright. Uh, oh, it won't let me uh, change the order. Because that is the other problem I'm about to have. I need to uh, unequip my lightsaber for just a little bit. And that'll make sense soon. Uh, oh, 
That's the remote. Okay. Well, let's get that camera down where it needs to be. All right. I'll have to... You know what? I might do a crew check-in at the end of the stream as the last episode or two. But first things first. I need to head on over... To the nav. Go to my galaxy map. Let me go ahead and switch to a game-only view, so that way, when it does the inevitable animation, you'll see everything that's going on. So, progress we've been to. It was a blast. Yeah. Uh, Citadel Station we've been to. We've done everything that we can do there for now. Dantooine. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. Because we finished Korriban, we finished Nar Shaddaa. We're, we can't fly to Andron. We, we're leaving Dixon right now. So, uh, here we go. Here we go! Uh, is somebody going to shoot us down when we get to Dantooine too? Like, is it just me, or have we been shot at everywhere that we've tried to land? I'm pretty sure we've been shot at just about everywhere. In every which way. Okay. That's encouraging. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Okay. Uh, get our camera and game back up. There we go. Now, the people of Dantooine are super, super irritated with the Jedi. That's why I do not want my lightsaber out right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take T3. Partly because he's got no lightsaber, so they're not going to be mad at him. And partly because of a little bonus thing you'll get to see, too. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take Baudur. Because he's usually a good guy to have around. Okay. Are you sure? I am sure. And the Another other... visitor? Oh. Hi. must be here to join in the plunder of the old Jedi Enclave. Oh. Um... You have to see Administrator Adari first. Uh, Administer Adari? Wait, what are you talking about? You're one of the salvagers, right? Your ship looks banged up enough to be part of that oh. lot. But you look hey. different. Wait a second. She's not banged up. She's got character. Alright. Uh, My ship isn't banged up. <laughs> Have you taken a look at your ship recently? It looks like it's been chewed up and spit out by a Wookiee. Twice. But hey. you're the boss. So your ship is in just great shape. You really don't look like a salvager, though. Why did you come here? Uh... Ooh. I want to visit the Enclave, but I'm not a salvager, which is true. I'm a Jedi and want to see the Enclave, which is counter true and counterproductive. I'm just visiting. I lived here once, which is technically true by the game's lore, if I remember right. My business is my own. I don't know if that's going to help us. So let's let's go with I want to visit the Enclave, but I'm not a salvager. Just to see the sights, right? You're just another salvager. Go see Administrator Adari in Kunda if you want to get into the ruins. Um, where is Kunda? Kunda is the big building just outside the landing port. It used to be the estate of a man named oh, Tali. Another callback to the first Knights of the Old Republic. The, time of the, bombardment. the administrator rebuilt it, and now this is our center of government. Matali was uh, one of the families involved in a very Hatfield McCoy esque side quest that you needed to finish in the first Knights of the Old Republic. Kinda nice to have those kind of those callbacks. Um so who is it Minister Adari? She was the agricultural administrator of Dantooine. After the Sith attack, she kept us together. Without her, the only thing you'd see around here are mercenaries. Hmm. Uh, 
Why are there so many mercenaries here? We had problems with Mandalorian mercenaries even before the yeah. Jedi Civil War. The Jedi oh, I should have had Mandalore for this part. <laughs> but after the war, many soldiers from both sides of the conflict became mercenaries. And since we're so far from the core, some started gathering here. Uh, have the mercenaries caused any problems? The difference between an out-of-work mercenary and a raider is a vibroblade's edge. Hmm. The only thing we can That's prove rough. they've done is intimidate a few farmers. The farmers give them goods, money, or food just to stay on their good side. The only one that isn't scared of them is the administrator. There have also been huh. a lot of disappearances recently, and not all of them can be blamed on calf hounds. Is that Nobody so? Nobody can prove the mercenaries are responsible. Uh, who's disappeared? A farmer here and there, or a family. We lost enough people during the war that keeping the calf hound and kinrath populations under control. Oh yeah, that's right. There was a big calf hound so population. There are a lot of animal attacks. That was one of the side quests was too. clearing them out. The disappearances might be just coincidence, but mm -hmm. a lot of the stubborn folks seem to be more accident prone. I catch your drift. Uh, why do I need permission to enter the enclave? Have you ever sliced a Jedi security door? Well, actually, yes, I have. From salvagers, unless they get permission from Adare. All right, I just guess that's about it. Building, and you'll find your way to the administrator. I'll be over by the entrance if you need anything else. All right, so now we got a journal entry. We got our crew. Uh, relics of the past. There are probably some Jedi artifacts that are still buried into the ruins of the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine. Dylan said you need to get permission from Administrator Adari of Kunda to visit there. All right. So there's our message. And now I can switch... And then go put my uh, double-bladed saber back on, back on track. That is mine, right? Yeah, that is mine. That's the orange one. Well, I, I will have to do something about those other. I finally got, I finally got a few lightsabers now. Hmm. Oh, hey, and my crew need leveling. Let's uh, let's do that real quick before we go too much further. Especially since we're running a little short on time. Oh, he gets a... Ooh. Mm. Oh, no. Clear winner. Constitution pump. If I bump him up to 16, that means he can take care of the second level implants now. Um, definite. Definite. Yep. Okay. Skills. All the skills. That's why I haven't converted him from a tech specialist to a Jedi yet. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to do uh, between the last time and this was find out what the cap skill for crafting stuff was. Um, I need to go through the different components and find out what the top level, the the top value you need to craft those items. Like I know some of them you need a 30 to craft, some of them you need a 32 to craft in the appropriate skill. And what I want to do is, as soon as I get him to where he's got enough skill ranks to do everything, all the crafting that I could ever need him to do, I will, I'll then convert him over to a Jedi and start getting him those uh, Jedi Guardian levels that he'll pick up when he does. Soon. Good, sir. Soon. All right. Accept. There we go. And... Little droid, little droid. You, oh yeah, that's right. You also got skills. So we'll go computer use and demolitions and repair and security. And I can't give you treat injury. I can't give you persuade and I can't give you stealth, which is probably appropriate. So we'll just dump the rest in awareness. Okay. And accept. Oh, he's got a couple of... Oh, how did I miss that? Uh, that's right. We were working on his dexterity. Okay. And all the skills again. Okay. Feats. I'm actually running out of feats to give him. <laughs> uh, I could give him improved caution, which gives him a bonus to demolitions and stealth. The only problem is, and I didn't realize this when I gave him the first level, is... You gotta have at least one skill point in a particular skill to receive that bonus, and he has zero points in demolitions or stealth, and it doesn't seem to be giving me the option to assign those either. So I, I guess I'll just go with the Master Gearhead, which is going to increase his bonus to repair, security, and computer use. 
or I could start giving him toughness and improve toughness and go down that line uh, and dual strikes the, the last of the line. So I think what I'll do is I'll go toughness this time because I would like him to survive if I ever need to pull him into a party. And then I'll do the improved gearhead and then go from there. Okay, accept. There we go, little buddy. Oh, and I almost forgot. I think I got uh, the Motivator Booster Defense and Dex. And what's this other one? Self-sustaining? Ooh, that's right. This module, only usable by T3, gives him the ability to regenerate vitality points, something that droids don't naturally have. Uh, so, Regen 3... Regen 3. Uh, I don't want to sub that in. Uh, but I don't... Alright, let's double check real quick. Uh, the agility upgrade was not it. Although, defense bonus 2, dex 1. I lose the defense bonus, but I gain 3 dex. Which is going to give me the same as a bump to defense bonus 1 and a dex plus 1. Except it'll also help attack. Uh, fortitude and con, computer use and security, repair, reflex, and dex. <laughs> uh, lose awareness, but a plus 10 to security. Ooh. Alright, now the only, the only real question is uh, the agility upgrade. For, for a minute there, I thought I had the combat upgrade or is it one of these guys yeah there we go I, I did leave that right okay uh perception sensors attack plus two defense and a bump to awareness and demolitions but this upgrade the battle upgrade you notice how it gives him the what the bonus feats for not just blaster pistols but also blaster rifles, so that gives him proficiency, focus, and specialization in both of those. And that means that droids that you can't normally equip right with rifles can now take rifles. How you fit a rifle in a droid that's supposed to only have two little spots for uh, blasters? I don't know, but I don't ask those questions. Um, of course, that's not a bad one either. To get all the sniper shot, but I, I never, I never like using that feat, so that might also be parts. Um, attack. Oh, okay. So I gotta, I gotta think. Do it? Do I really? All right. Mm, even if I, even if I don't want to give him the weapons focus, that bumps his attack from plus two to plus three, and his defense from one to two, and adds constitution and dexterity. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Uh, fully upgradable? 3 to 25? Although I thought, there, I thought there was somebody else that I wanted to give the next Xerxium rifle to that I found. Uh, so, let me just give him a regular repeating blaster rifle for the moment. And as soon as I figure out who I wanted to give that other Xerxium rifle to, uh, it might have been a different droid. <laughs> if you catch where I'm going. All right, let's get back. Nobody's got lightsaber showing. Everybody's still armed. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and save before I forget. And uh, we're going to insert our first cut here. Well, that was fun. Unless I just died. Then it was a little less than fun. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're having fun. And if you want to watch live, you can follow along on Twitch. I live stream the recording of the next six episodes at least once a week. I might even throw in some bonus content here and there if time allows. And you'll find the link in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll get notified when new episodes go up live stream archives from some of my other stuff and various and sundry other videos because I do more than just this. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to hit the bell. 
And if you really, truly enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and all that good fun stuff. If you have any questions, queries, quips, scopes, comments, complaints, or other whatnot, don't forget to leave those in the comments down below. Lastly, if you're enjoying the show, if you're getting some value out of it, then consider giving a little value back. Go to live.anonjunior.com. It'll take you to the Streamlabs page where you can tip or donate, however you want to think about it. And there's no preset amount because this is a straight up value for value proposition. So if you're getting value out of the show and you would like to give a little value back, even if it's just enough for a cheap cup of coffee, then uh, consider going, giving a little bit, especially if it tickled the nostalgia or opened your eyes to a new game that you might play. And uh, with all that said and done, we're, uh, we're going to cut out, have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time.